The SS Hopstenführer stumbled out of the glider in the drama of the crash landing he had forgotten his submachine gun, but ran towards the hotel anyway, his men following. He cut an imposing figure at 1.92 metres, 6 foot 4 inches, complete with dramatic dueling scar to left cheek. Opening the first door that he came across, he stormed into a room full of radio equipment and a surprised operator. He kicked the chair, smashed the radio and ran back outside. Operation Aisha and Otto Skotseni, most dangerous man in Europe or incompetent Nazi. Rewind, end of an era. Il Duce, Benito Mussolini, had ruled Italy as Prime Minister since his dramatic seizure of power in 1922. However, the Italian army's awful performance in the African and Greek campaigns really hurt Mussolini's standing in his own government, and the Allied invasion of Sicily in July 1943 finished him. On the 24th July, the Fascist Grand Council in Rome held a vote of no confidence in Mussolini, and King Victor Emmanuel wasted no time in replacing him as Prime Minister with Marshal Pietro Badoglio. Shortly afterwards, the King had Il Duce arrested. After Italy went over to the Allies on the 3rd September, German forces swiftly occupied northern and central Italy and Rome. Hitler had previously ordered that his longtime ally be found and plans be drawn up to rescue him. The King and Marshal Badoglio had fled to the south while Mussolini was being moved around in an attempt to hide his whereabouts from the Germans. The Plan Hitler, as was his custom, gave similar orders to competing German military organisations and therefore ordered SS Hauptsturmführer Otto Skotseni to track down Mussolini's location, while simultaneously ordering the Foschemjager General Kurt Student to formulate a plan of rescue. German signals intelligence intercepted radio transmissions that indicated Mussolini was being held under armed guard in the remote Hotel Campo, atop the peak of the 5,560-foot Gran Sasso, high in the Abruzzo Mountains, northeast of Rome. Aerial reconnaissance had shown that the hotel's location on the mountaintop was too risky for a parachute landing. However, the reconnaissance also revealed the presence of a strip of land by the hotel that seemed suitable for landing gliders. So the rescue plan was dramatic. Paratroopers and a small SS detachment would land by glider on the mountain and assault the hotel whilst another party of paratroopers travelling in by road was to simultaneously capture the cable car station at the foot of the mountain before flying Mussolini to safety in Germany. Interestingly, Scott Saini insisted that he have photographer Tony Schneiders and a journalist accompany the SS detachment, though in his memoir he insisted that Tony Schneiders was added to the mission list by his deputy Carl Raddle. General Student was annoyed but went along with Scott Saini's suggestion. Operation Aisha At 1305 hours, 12th September 1943, the airborne component of the raid the Foschemjaga, led by Oberleutnant Georg Freher von Belepsch and Otto Skotseni with his handful of elite SS commandos, boarded 10 DFS 230 gliders and set off from Pratica di Mare airbase near Rome for the hotel. At 14.05 hours, the first glider arrived at the top of the mountain. It was Skotseni's and he saw that the supposed flat ground selected for landing was actually a steep and rocky slope and so his glider crash-landed, as did subsequent gliders, injuring some of the paratroopers inside one. At the same time, far below, at the foot of the mountain, the paratroopers, led by Major Harald Morse, successfully confronted about 100 carabinieri and captured the funicular railway, severing all telephone lines. As related in the introduction to this presentation, Scott Saini staggered out of his glider, forgetting his submachine gun and without giving orders to his men, and raced up the slope to the hotel. Opening a door, Scott Saini found himself in the communications room and proceeded to smash the transmitter as his 16 commandos followed him up to the hotel. Around a hundred well-equipped carabinieri guarded Mussolini inside. However, Scott Saini, possibly at the suggestion of his deputy, Carl Raddle, 
had brought along a captured Italian general, Fernando Saletti. As the commandos tried to enter the hotel, General Saletti made himself known and called out for the Carabinieri to stand down. Confused, the Italians laid down their arms and surrendered. After the Carabinieri had surrendered, Scozzini entered the hotel, dashed upstairs and began searching for Mussolini. When he finally found him, he cried, Duce, the Führer has sent me, you're free. Meanwhile, overall commander of the operation, Major Mortz, used the funicular railway to travel up the mountain to the hotel, arriving at 14.45 hours. He greeted Mussolini and introduced himself. Scozzini radio for a Fiesler. FI-156 Deutsche plane to come and pick Il Duce up. A reckless decision. The Fies Les Deutsch made the difficult landing and Mussolini boarded. At this point, the operation took its most dangerous turn. The Storch was not designed to handle more than two passengers, yet despite this, the heavily built Scozzini recklessly insisted on accompanying Mussolini, thereby grossly overloading the plane and endangering the entire mission's success. Mission accomplished. However, the Storch's pilots managed to take off after dropping a thousand feet over a precipice, and they flew to Pratica di Mari. Mussolini and Scorsini then boarded a Heinkel HE-111 and set off for Vienna, before flying on to Munich the next day. On 14th September, they met Hitler at Führer headquarters in Wolf's Lair near Rastenburg. Aftermath In a major propaganda coup for Reichsführer SS Himmler, Skotseni and his Waffen-SS commandos were given the majority of the credit for the operation. Skotseni personally benefited greatly, he was promoted to Sturmbannführer, was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross and gained such notoriety that prompted even Churchill to describe him as the most dangerous man in Europe. Whether he really deserved the accolade is a matter of debate. The historian Oscar González López wrote about the operation in his book Freeing Mussolini, Dismantling the Scotsani Myth in the Grand Sasso Raid, 2018, and states that Scotsani was a fake liberator created by Nazi propaganda and credits the Fallschirmjager commanded by Major Moors and Oberleutnant Georg von Belepsch as the legitimate protagonists of the Grand Sasso Raid. Scott Saini, in a bizarre twist, would go on to work for Mossad, the Israeli secret service, in 1963. The Scott Saini myth, especially in the events of Operation Aisha, are enduring, but what do you think? Was he, as Winston Churchill put it, the most dangerous man in Europe, or was his role and entire career built on sham Nazi propaganda? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Don't forget to subscribe and like this if you did.